repeated. Repeating, re- repetition. Not truth, not fact, not questioning, not investigation, but beliefs that come purely from repetition. Those, those emissions out of your exhaust are killing the planet because they're causing global warming. No, they're not. No, they're not. I'm not saying they're a good thing. Don't want to breathe them in, although um, it's been massively overplayed, but do they cause global warming? No. But it's the norm, belief that it does. Why? Repetition. And then with this is to keep us in this state of believing the unbelievable, we, we go into this state. It's fascinating when I came across this, when I then looked at the world every day from this perspective. It's called cognitive dissonance. And what it is, for people who haven't come across it, when you believe something and you come across information or an experience which is at odds with the belief, you actually go into a, an emotional state. The, uh, it's a, it's a disharmonious vibrational emotional state because you can't square your belief with your experience or the information you've come across. Now, this can be a good thing because if you say, as a result of this unease, I'm going to look again at my belief in the light of that, then you can move forward and you can say, hey, I'm, mo- I'm changing my belief here because that's obviously challenging the one I had before. But no, what most people do, this happens so much in religion and politics and stuff, is to, to, to get rid of this, they have to explain that away while still retaining this. Like, we're going to war because we want peace. That's how you do it. Cognitive dissonance. Lying to yourself making unbelievable lies to yourself to preserve your belief. That's how it continues. If we were honest with ourselves, beliefs would evolve in the light of new information. Another way of putting this was George Orwell's doublethink in his book 1984. Doublethink means the power of holding two contradictory beliefs in one's mind simultaneously and accepting both of them. That's another uh, more extended version of cognitive dissonance, where you can so convince yourself that two opposites are true that you don't actually even have to go into the unease. And of course, these are great cognitive dissonance lines. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. And vast numbers of people on this planet believe those things. By taking our freedoms away, we protect our liberties. That's another good one. But when you, when you start to connect the dots, the bewildered map and maze starts to become clearer. Just press that back. Doctors destroy health. Why? Because doctors are not there, some individuals may be, but the profession as a whole, the industry is not there primarily to um, heal people. It's there to serve the diktats and the agenda of the transnational pharmaceutical cartel and those families that control it. Because cartels are not capitalism, they're cartels, they work as one unit. And you don't want a healthy population, therefore one that can think straight and sharply if you want to control them. You don't want that at all. It's about wealth, not health, the medical Industry. It's about serving Big Pharma, the pharmaceutical cartel. Lawyers destroy justice. Of course they do. Laws are not there to protect the people overwhelmingly. They're there to impose the will of the system upon the people and keep them in line. So you have to um, have a, a legal profession that serves that system primarily, with some honourable exceptions, And therefore, justice is not what it's about. It's just about serving the system and arguing black is white in a courtroom. Universities destroy knowledge. If you're a few people, a a network of families, and you want to control entire population, my goodness, do you want uh, people um, uh, being told things they really need to know through their formative years so they can suss what's going on? No way. 
You want people to believe a version of reality that suits your agenda. So that's what they get overwhelmingly in education or what passes for it, with honourable exceptions, individually. You know, if you, if you were sitting around a table and you're thinking, how do we get people to see the world the way we want them to see it, that suits us? And somebody might say, you know, the, I don't know whether they'll accept this, but the best thing we can do is take children from the earliest age and have control of their minds from uh, four or five right through their formative years, right into their teenage years, five days a week, maybe more, to tell them what we want them to believe. But that's what we've got, it's called the education system. Education, I think it's about time we had some. Instead, we are given the system's version of reality, filled with all this fake history, fake political science, fake versions of scientific reality. And more and more, it's places like America, it's dumb them down, dumb them down. As one great American com comedian said, all you need now is a, virtually is a bloody pencil. You got a pencil? Okay, get in there, it's physics. They don't want educated, sharp people, that's the point. And it happens all over the world. We're educating them, no, you're indoctrinating them. And now we've got young people in the, in the, the formative years where they should be happy and relaxed and enjoying life. <laughs> Am I going to pass my exams? Will I get an A? Will I get an A star? Will I get a B? Oh my God, my whole future depends on it. Oh my God. Will I be indoctrinated enough to pass? Do we ever talk in school about being happy? I don't know. We don't do much in England. What about being happy? What about being fulfilled? What about being at peace with self? What about questioning and coming to your own conclusions? Did that ever come? No, no. Got to, got to follow the curriculum. If you don't follow the curriculum, you don't pass the exams and all oh, your life's over. Governments destroy freedom. This is a big, big thing for people to understand who are new to any of this. Governments are not there to serve the people. <laughs> I know it's obvious to people here, but sometimes you have to sometimes you have to make it clear. Governments are there to impose the will of the agenda of these families onto the people. And the people that do it are usually men in dark suits, overwhelmingly. Men in dark suits. It's funny, every time someone comes on in authority, they're in a dark suit, I love it. Um, and they come from certain bloodlines. This is George Bush's, apparently. Apparently, he's, he's, um, his line is about to evolve at some point. I don't know when. This was a, this was a head scan he had. Um, now, let's think about this. 300 million people in America... I know they say anyone can become president in America, it's a nonsense, but I know they say that. But clearly, you do not have to be um, mentally sharp to become president. All you need is the money and the backing of those who decide the presidency. I mean, this is the one George Bush line, I could have picked hundreds. Our enemies are innovative and resourceful, and so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people, and neither do we. Now, this, this man was President of the United States, please God tell me it's not true, for eight bloody years. And a few people don't control the world, please. And now, hey, Superman's arrived. Superman, the Buddha, Jesus, and anyone, you, any name you want to put to him, Mr. Fake Obama, who has scammed the American collective psyche on a scale that beggars belief, though many, many people are starting to see uh, the truth of that as we see him in action. But despite Mr. Change Obama, and I'll get into him big time in the second half, um, we have still this agenda moving on by the day 
to imprison humanity and to destroy free speech and all that stuff. Nothing changes, even though you have on the surface such an apparently vast change from Bush to Obama, the same agenda continues despite that because it's all image and really it's all a scam and it's all a sleight of hand. Major media destroy information. Of course they do. If you had a real journalist investigating what's really going on in the world and telling the people, this whole agenda, this whole global conspiracy will be over in a week. But they don't. And once again, I was a journalist for years in BBC and newspapers and stuff. My goodness. You don't have to be intelligent to be a journalist and you certainly don't have to be informed. I can tell you that from personal experience. You really don't. In fact, it's a bad career move if you're really informed. Uh, <clears throat> Smith, they tell me you're, you're um, really informed. I think we ought to have a shut in my office. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks, nation builders. We couldn't control the people without you. And I say this to journalists. Who, who, who think in investigative journalism is reading the morning newspapers and watching the newsroom television. You have children and grandchildren and they're going to have to live in the world that you're helping to create by not doing the job that you claim to do on your tax form, i.e. being a journalist. Religions destroy spirituality, of course, again, because they are there to keep people from truly understanding the true magnitude and infinite nature of who we are behind all the fronts of bodies and minds and all the rest of it. That's what they're there to do. And what are, what are religions? Rules and regulations. If you believe that, you're not a Catholic. If you believe that, you're not a Jew. If you believe that, you're not an, a Muslim. Rules and regulations, the common denominator. And what are they? Walls of limitation. The world is crazy, he thinks it's sane. My God. What do we do? We pepper bomb cities full of civilians as a peacekeeping operation. We've now reached the point where we're so bloody clever, we have the technology to kill more people quicker than ever before. We liberate people by blowing them to pieces. We have children in this state-of-the-art world, signing their names on bombs which are then dropped on other children, message received. And it's all kept from us at, a, at the level of where we'll actually do anything about it by the constant hypnotic stuff that we get, the diversions. Game show. Hey, just a game show on, honey. She's going to win the car. Hey, here's a celebrity. Hey, the celebrities, the new religion. Read People magazine. Read OK. Who's going to bed with who? Hey, who's got a new big house? Ooh, what's going on there? Oh, shut that noise off, will you? I'm reading this. Let's watch the sport. I love sport. But when sport becomes the focus of everything, instead of an add-on to your life, it's a diversion so you don't see. And then we have the newsreaders telling us everything that the system wants us to think is true what they do. But this is the key one, all the time. Be afraid, be very afraid. The big bad monster's coming as soon as we've invented him. Keep people in fear. That's the key. Oh, terrorism! Ah! Oh, global warming! Ah! Swine flu! Ah! <laughs> why they do that will become very clear at a very deep level um, in a second or in, a, in the second half rather and it's all about this, is, this, is, this will be very key when I get to what I've just said in the second half, that, that point it's about keeping us in a state of survival Fearing, not surviving. Not just physically fearing, but not surviving, but not meeting the rent. Not surviving in our job. Not surviving, not surviving. And we've reached a point, a real big fork in the road, where we, we have big choices to make. And not, not next week, now. 
over which way we're going to go. Because if things go on as they are, then we will live in a global fascist dictatorship within a decade, and I'm probably being optimistic. Well, however, if we go in another direction, we can bring it tumbling down. We can either go there, or we can go there. And ha what we do in the next two or three years is going to fundamentally decide which way we go. That's what they want. They want us so robotic. Never, we think people can be robotic today. Well, treble it, quadruple it, multiply it by a thousand. That's what they want. In effect, barcoded people, nothing more than clones. If we're going to be free, truly free, not what we call freedom now, it's not freedom, it's just a little bit less enslavement. It's like happiness. Most people are not really happy in the true infinite nature of happiness. That We, we equate happiness with being less unhappy than we were yesterday. It feels better, so we must be happy now. And it's the same with freedom. Oh, because we can do this and they in that country can't do that, we must be free and they must not be free. But if you get to the true nature of freedom, none of us are free. Unless we choose to take it. And one of these choices is obey authority and lose our freedom to even to express ourselves, to succumb to fear. Oh, authority, oh, man in uniform, oh. Or we can know thyself. We can know that we are not that which we see in the mirror. We can see that we are all that is, has been and ever will be having an experience in this reality and we've got caught by, into believing that we are the vehicle of experience, i.e. this, and not what is having the experience. We can choose not to be in fear of these silly people in uniform. And by the way, people in uniform think they have power. No, they don't. No, no. The uniform has power. They'd have no power. Okay, you're a policeman. Okay, take your uniform off. Okay, where's your power? Your power's in the wardrobe, mate, not you. You're just a vehicle to animate the uniform, which is the uniform is the um, asset of the state. You're just there for as long as you are allowed to animate the uniform. And then you retire or they sack you and someone else animates the uniform. And they've got no power either. And people in uniform also have children and grandchildren who will have to live in this dictatorship, global dictatorship that they are enforcing. Comply, compliance. It's what we must do. We must comply. We must be slaves. Or we can have no compliance. We can have what I call the no comply dance, where we cease to cooperate with our own enslavement. Comply! Nope. Nope. Do this! No. Nope. nope. Chill out, man. Nope. Number of people controlling this reality in full knowledge, handful compared with the global population. I see a way out of this. And it's by looking in the mirror and seeing who we really are and not who we've been manipulated to believe that we are. It's by beating to a different drum, not going with the herd, being the maverick. As Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. We are at a time of challenge and controversy. Where we stand now will decide where we go from here. We either accept the hypnotism 